All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tombstone. I'm the leader CEO of United Vindication. I'm also an admin uh, slash mod for Team Sirius. I'm trying to introduce a project that we have all been working on. There's five communities that are represented here, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But I wanted to introduce a project that we are working on that's going to take place from December 10th through December 13th of 2020. We are coming together as a group of five communities to push um, a message to the masses about breaking the stigma of mental health. This is not an opportunity for us to talk about mental health and what we've been through per se, but more how we're coping with it and how we're breaking the stigma and that we're willing to find help and willing to talk about it. It's much more than just getting in here talking about anxiety, depression, PTSD, and all those nasty, nasty things that uh, can swallow you up in mental health. But we're also talking about how to defeat it. We're talking about how we have personally overcome this so that maybe somebody who's watching can find help and can find some sign of solace in what they are doing. Uh, if we can help one or two people find uh, some sort of relief from this nasty, nasty monster, uh, then that's considered success to us. Uh, we're talking uh, we're, we're talking four straight days of videos, uh, offline recordings, podcasts, streams, streamers who are talking about their, their uh, experiences with mental health. And we're not trying to make this sad. We're not trying to bring down the mood. We're trying to always spin a, a positive light on, on finding help for mental health. And that's what this uh, Break the Stigma event is all about. It's about finding relief for someone. And uh, I know from my experience that these six or these five people that are around me, if we can help just one person find relief and find some sort of comfort in a time of need uh, or save their life even, uh, that's where that's why we're all here. And that's why we're putting together this, this wonderful, wonderful program. So as an introduction, uh, we're talking December 10th through the 13th. Again, it's going to start on Thursday. It's going to be pre-recording videos on Thursday all day. Uh, we're going to have people who can't necessarily be around for the weekend who are going to pre-record their thoughts and feelings. And we're going to be posting those from all five uh, Twitch accounts. Uh, we actually have Trovo accounts as well with Galaxy Hound. Okay, So uh, these are going to go live from the United Vindication, Team Sirius, Rage Zone, and Kiwi, uh, Club Kiwi Twitch channels. And we're going to all host them ourselves too. So you're going to see a bunch of people streaming the same thing. So you can find it at any one of our channels. Um, but they're going to be pre-recorded videos. Uh, less interaction, but you're going to get to see the same raw emotion that's going to come through the streams and the podcasts. Uh, on Saturday or on Friday, we're going to start off with Galaxy Hound. Galaxy Hound is going to lead us with a six-hour uh, con consistent stream talking about their mental health experiences. And then we'll roll into Saturday and Sunday with live streams from the other four communities. Okay. Um, as a whole, these five organizations, uh, it's United Vindication, Team Sirius, uh, Rage Zone, Club Kiwi, and Galaxy Hound. Uh, Galaxy Hound is actually an official sponsor of the of the event as well. They are uh, the merchandise store for both United Vindication and Team Sirius, which actually comes in pretty handy. Uh, but they are going to be uh, not only participating in it, but they are also going to be a sponsor as well. Uh, you can go to any one of our discords. There are four. There's five discords involved in this, and this is actually where we get to where we can talk about this and where we share ideas. Uh, United Vindication, Team Series, Rage Zone, Club Kiwi, and Galaxy Hound. We all have five. Uh, we all have a Discord. We all have a Twitch channel. All you have to do is reach out if you want to uh, take part or or be a part of something great during that time. Uh, for United Vindication, we're gonna we're gonna kind of go around the uh, around the room a little bit. We're gonna talk about what this event means to each specific community and why we're participating, okay? Uh, United Vindication, um, it's one of my two communities. I'm only a part of two communities where I'm really involved. Uh, I have recently joined both Rage Zone and Club Kiwi as well. Uh, but UV is where I spend most of my time. And United Vindication is uh, based upon a family-like atmosphere where you come in, you be as positive as possible, uh, that you you take time out of your day to say hello, you say good morning, you check in with your brothers and sisters, and you really get a chance to get to know one another in a very friendly environment. It is a place where we have a bunch of kids. We have a lot of kids. We have a lot of ladies. We have a lot of uh, young gentlemen. Uh, we both do competitive gaming and we do laid back gaming, but we're not really in the competitive scene yet. We're just kind of starting there. We're not really a streaming community. Uh, we're just a, a gaming community and a, a family-like atmosphere. But for us to take part in something like this, it was meant as an opportunity for us to uh, be part of something bigger. Uh, we always talk about that in our Discord. We talk about how can we be about something more than ourselves. Uh, and this is an opportunity to do so. Um, myself, uh, I spent 
10 years in the military. I deal with a lot of mental health issues. Uh, Sage, she's been here with me the whole time trying to help me through it. Uh, she has guided me in a lot of ways. And so my story is going to be about my experience and how I deal with it, whereas maybe she may talk about uh, how she's dealt with her spouse going through hell. So uh, for United Vindication, it's just an opportunity to be about something bigger than ourselves and maybe help somebody within our family uh, to seek help because we talk about it a lot. Uh, so that's United Vindication. That's our front. Uh, for the rest of the group, I'm going to go ahead and introduce those guys. Uh, hello, Jimmy. She is from Team Sirius. She is representing the Sirius ladies of Team Sirius, and she'll give us a little bit of a rundown here in just a second. Uh, down beneath her is uh, Shook or Shooky Rocksaurus. Uh, he is the CEO of Team Sirius. Uh, Team Sirius, uh, they just recently uh, got their LLC complete, so they are officially on the business end. He is the man in charge and running all that, so he will talk about Team Sirius uh, and their involvement as well. Beneath me is Rage Quit Now. He is uh, the head man of Rage Zone. He represents himself very well. He's done a wonderful job building his brand. Uh, and he was actually one of those communities that I really wanted to get involved with because of the, the just sheer amount of hype and experience that this man brings to the table. It's absolutely phenomenal. Kiwi is down to the uh, bottom left of your screen. Kiwi is uh, the head lady of Club Kiwi. She's also an integral, valuable member to both Rage Zone and United Vindication. And I think she's a part of Team Sirius too. She's kind of everywhere. She is a wonderful lady. She is uh, an inspiration to most of us. Uh, I can speak personally. She's absolutely phenomenal. The strength that this woman shows on a daily basis is a, uh, it's an, uh, I can attribute that to just how strong mentally she is. She goes through her rough days too, but holy crap, what an inspiration to the rest of us. She's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, to my right, left on your screen i can't really tell this is sage rage she's not only uh she's not only the project's executive for united vindication she's also one of the admins for team Sirius, and she's also representing galaxy hound so she's a, a lady of many many talents she is here to tell us about galaxy hound and what galaxy hound is going to be providing to uh this event and and mental health as a whole so going around the room we're going to start with the team Sirius ladies with hello jimmy they're going to give a kind of an understanding of why their community is participating in then we're going to go around again a, a second time where they give their personal experiences. So, uh, Jimmy, lead away. Well, hello, everybody. Um, totally not nervous or feeling on the spot. We're going to do this. Um, well, as Tim said, I'm part of Team Serious, and I am a serious lady. And so Serious Ladies, you know, we, um, we got together and we wanted to start uh, – creating safe space for lady gamers and gamers in general, young gamers, uh, just to be able to be somewhere we don't feel judged, where we feel like we can do what we uh, we like doing and just do it together. And we decided that we wanted to be part of this because uh, mental health is something that each and every one of us, um, you know, we, we feel strongly about. Um, personally, I'm a big advocate of better mental health for soldiers, uh, for veterans. Uh, being a veteran myself, I've been in for almost 14 years, still currently serving. Um, and it's uh, it's it's near and dear because it's something it, it's not just something that um, that I hear about or that I've seen somewhere. I, I've I've personally felt it. I've seen what happens to my friends because they you know, in the military, they are your family. And it's the same thing with the gaming community. A lot of my friends that are in these gaming communities, they are they're also veterans and they become family and it's something that's important. And we think that it's, it's, we need to talk about it. We need to figure out ways to build better tools, to get those tools out there and to make sure that everybody has availability to them. And uh, that's really what uh, team serious and team serious ladies wants to do. I don't know how long I was supposed to go. Hi guys, this is Shook here. Um, I'm with Team Sirius, just like Hello Jimmy. Hello Jimmy and I are actually business partners with, uh, along with her husband, uh, Not So Busy, and um, another one who uh, is not here right now, but his name's Ramezi. And with all of us together, we 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 kind of sat down to kind of see what we wanted to do when it came in 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 the gaming community and uh, and into the industry. We had this vision that came with uh, me and Natsu and Ramezi at the very beginning. And then we talked about what it is that we wanted Team Serious to be. Not only did we want to do something in the gaming industry, but we also wanted to find a niche inside the gaming industry. Not only that, but also provide 
uh, kind of like what Hello Jimmy was saying, a safe haven for those who uh, may be in communities that, you know, aren't so welcomed by the outside world. Uh, this includes females and, and you know, includes males as well and different types of communities that, that, you know, we have out there that they may not have a sense of belonging. That's what we wanted to provide in Team Sirius was anyone here or anybody outside can come and join and feel welcome and be a part of the community. Um, that's the biggest goal that we had. So whenever we started talking about, you know, the whole mental stream aspect of it, uh, when we were in the talks of it, uh, I said, I'll share my story because I know how much it impacted me and the people around me and where I'm at now when I overcame this. So, uh, for me, it was very important for team Sirius to step in. It was a no brainer. As soon as not told me about it, I was like, yes, let's do it. Um, you know, whatever we have to do, we got to do. So that's why I'm here today. Uh, we're representing Team Sirius because Team Sirius is very, very supportive of, of what's going on right now. We always believe in giving back to our communities. Uh, and if there's a give back that we can somehow help and provide value to, we'll always do so. So that's why we're here. We're hoping to make a difference. Uh, just like we spoke not too long ago, if we can just make a difference in one person's life, then that's better than make, than doing nothing. So we'd be accomplished even if we did that. My name is Rage Quit now. Ha 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 ha. And my channel has brought a lot of entertainment and then has brought a lot of competitiveness and edginess in the year that we have been on Twitch. And when I was approached by Tombstone and I had the opportunity to team up with United Vindication, Team Sirius, and with Club Kiwi in this initiative, I saw this as a great opportunity because so much in the gaming world, things are fixated on competition. Things are fixated on being number one, being the best, doing the best that you possibly can. And there's really no margin and no room for being second or for being weak or for not being vulnerable for anything in life. And honestly, when this initiative came around, I think when you're talking about the streaming world and when you're talking about Twitch and when you're talking about things that are real, such as cyberbullying, such as things that might be happening in your personal life. A lot of people have reached out to me and said to me, you know what? I come into your stream just as a release because of the things that are happening in my life. I come into your stream because it provides something that is an outlet for me. And I feel like I can connect with you and I feel like I can reach out to you personally. And I feel like I, there's somebody that's there. And I think that so much in the gaming world and in the streaming world, we portray this elitist mentality of always being the best, always having the nicest things, always having the cleanest look, always having the best branding, marketing, images, uh, things like that, that at the end of the day, it's okay to take a step back and say that it's okay to not be okay. And I think that it takes one brave streamer, it takes one brave person, it takes one brave soul, it takes one brave organization in this industry that is predominantly an elitist, must win, must do your best, must do everything that you have to do mentality to step out of that. And at the end of the day, we are here to cater as entertainers to our audience. But if our audience needs us, we need to be there for them. So I took this as a great opportunity for Rage Zone to join in on this because I feel that we fit that mold and we fit that criteria and we're here to step up and to help anybody that has anything that they want to talk about. Hey everybody, I'm Kiwi from Club Kiwi. Um, I want to say hi. You will see me turning my head a few times. Uh, it's because I've got kids in the background and uh, no one else to take care of them but me. Uh, I joined uh, literally United Vindication and Team Sirius and Rage Zone uh, with this initiative because I myself have seen both sides on the mental health journey. Um, basically for me, I'm a, a veteran of the New Zealand Army and being a medic, I had to deal with my time in the military with the side effects of what that career and job can do to a lot of people. I had to pick up the pieces, I had to clean up the messes and I had to show that support at times where there was nobody else to provide that support. Uh, you live with those scars, with what you see and what you do in the military, and it's a rough go, and it sticks with you forever. However, when we go uh, into civilian life, 
there are often haven't been a lot of supports uh, out there for everyone. And that's where I want to reach uh, within the communities. Within the gaming community, we don't get to see sometimes the real life behind the people. And when you start to hear those stories, you realize uh, the mental health aspect is a big one. And when I started streaming, my whole goal is to support communities, to support people and support what they have uh, going on um, in the background. So Club Kiwi is here. We're here to uh, help communities grow, help communities stay strong and healthy and excuse the face in the background. <laughs> um, this is my reality, um, you know, which is why my my everyday crazy is, is my normal. Um, and honestly, uh, we are going to be there as much as we can uh, for the future and for now and in this initiative to make sure people are healthy and stay strong and know there's somebody out there for them. The only thing I can say, Kiwi, is through all of this, your lovely speech not only brought almost tears to our eyes, but your lovely child has also brought a smile to our face. So I do appreciate all of that. Um, I myself represent uh, mental health, not only from my own small personal touch on mental health, but as a caregiver. So my touch and stuff would be as a caregiver point of view, mainly because of our son with autism, but um, from my personal touch with my spouse. But I'm also going to speak from Galaxy Hound, who is also another sponsor because I am with Team Sirius, I'm with United Vindication, I'm also in Rage Zone, I'm also in Club Kiwi. Um, we are also with Galaxy Hound. Galaxy Hound has, um, we reached out to Galaxy Hound. I spoke with them. I spoke with who I've always been in touch with, um, who has um, decided to help with any issues we've had. But I spoke or had the pleasure to speak with Carolyn. Um, and I kind of reached out and talked with her about what our huge um, event has now turned into with mental health. And the event we're putting on, they let her know what we're doing. I said, please, if you would like to um, sponsor or be a part of it. And not only do, do they want to be a part of this, um, they are offering to sponsor a lovely merch store that will have hashtag break the stigma, which to us, when people wear that merch, it gives the opportunity to start a conversation. And that is the biggest thing to us because mental health, no one wants to talk about it. Everyone kind of wants to hide it because it's not a fun subject. It's not something people are proud of. And in our eyes, yeah, no one wants to be proud of what they're going through. But at the same time, we want people to speak up about it. Because if you can speak up about the mental health you're going through, you could help someone, you could help yourself. You could bring light upon the stigma that mental health has. So once Galaxy Hound, we're working with, it, with them right now, we will have that merch store. And we would ask that if you are okay with it to purchase it because any donations or any profit that is brought through that will be donated towards any organization that Club Kiwi is um, wanting hers to go to or if Rage Zone has one or if Team Serious, they have theirs and also United Vindication have. We are going to start um, dividing that up or each month we'll start picking, rotating through those is what we're going to be doing. Um, that's what we're going to be doing. And um, Galaxy Hound is also going to be giving um, – a certain number of masks with hashtag break the stigma on it that we will be giving to the streamers who have signed up. We are going to be asking the admins if they can also purchase the masks or some type of merch to be wearing on the streams as well, because we want to promote that and we want to start those conversations. And that is the whole purpose of this to start the conversations, to share your stories, to get that out there. Um, just like me as um, mainly a caregiver of my spouse and um, our son who is autistic and people don't realize that autism is part of mental health for our son who goes through it. Um, he doesn't realize he has everyday struggles and he doesn't understand the socializ socialization of the distance and the struggles he has for me as a caregiver and my husband, who's a caregiver, it's stress. It's, and we go out into public, how are we going to handle it? How are we going to deal with, you know, if he has a breakdown, if he can't, properly socialize with someone, is that person going to understand it? Are they going to lash out at us? And especially with COVID, he touches everything. Are we going to be able to go out? So we have our, our own mental health with that as a caregiver. So it, it's different. Mental health looks different for every single person. And we want people to understand that. And it's okay. It's okay to not be okay. Um, it's okay to break the stigma. And that's what we want to portray with this. And we want people to know that.
So break the stigma meant a little bit more than uh, just stopping the the crushing pressure of talking about mental health. The stigma that we're talking about is both the inability for people to find help with mental health, the inability to want to find that Kiwi, I'm still crying. Dang you. Um, the inability for us to process information and to understand what mental health means. Mental health is health and it needs to be treated as such. And for those of you that go through it every day, it's a fight. It's an absolute battle. And it's a battle that you don't have to lose and you damn sure don't have to lose it alone. That's a stigma. People say that you need to isolate and you need to keep it to yourself because you might be looking for attention. That needs to go away. That whole stigma can just die off. It needs to go away. But also there's also now a reverse stigma to it. So many people are coming forward and so many people are willing to share this information that now it's starting to look like, oh, well, mental health is mainstream. This, this is a brand new stigma that we're going to have to face. Now I, I'm afraid to share my experience because now it's too mainstream. It, it, it looks like I'm looking for attention now. And, and all of these stigmas, we didn't say break the stigmas. It's the stigma. It all needs to go away. Um, I'm going to kind of reverse course on what I said earlier. I'm not going to start with Jimmy and go clockwise because we need to finish with them. So we're actually going to reverse course. I'm going to start uh, this next round in Sage Kiwi Rage, and we'll finish with Shook and uh, Jimmy giving more in-depth experiences. So uh, this is just going to be a two to five minute spiel about uh, a brief experience that you've had with mental health or or how you personally feel with mental health. And then we'll uh, we'll finish with Shook and Jimmy uh, giving a little bit more in depth, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so my own personal past, uh, I have on two different times uh, battled with addiction of pills. Um, codeine is a hell of a drug. And when you have it and you have access to it, it can tear you a lot. Uh, it can tear you apart. Um, I battled addiction after my first neck surgery. Um, I have had four neck surgeries. They've each been more and more painful every time. Uh, there was a time when my doctors were just throwing uh, coding at me like it was going in a style. Uh, so I ended up taking seven or eight at every two or three hours. I would have uh, extreme uh, anger issues. I would lash out at Sage and the kids all the time. I was not in a good place. I ended up having to self-report myself to, uh, to my commander in the military uh, and tried to find help that way. Um, I have also tried to commit suicide. Um, I, I was caught in a very bad time in my life where I was making bad decision after bad decision and I couldn't get out of it. I didn't know how to get out of it. Um, and instead of fixing it, I was always like, well, I'm going to get in trouble with this person or that person. So I buried myself deeper. Uh, mental health is something that you, you go through, but you really just need to know how to hit the brakes. You need to know how to stop it. It's a spiral that never stops. Um, I battle PTSD, I battle anxiety, I battle depression. And trust me when I say that uh, addiction is not a good thing to add into those three. That's a that's a terrible mix. So um, I have now my strengths and my weaknesses. I, I kind of know who I am. I'm willing to stand up and fight for this. I'm willing to tell people my story because uh, I don't want them to go through it. And people ask me all the time, well, why, why are you willing to share this when your kids could be watching? Um, and the reason why is because I don't want my kids to go through it. And if they can see me stand here and talk about it, they're not gonna internalize it. And uh, I wanna be an example for them. And hearing Kiwi talk about the military and what it did to her and the scars that it leaves, it's absolutely true. Uh, the scars are deep, they don't go away. And when people are like, oh, well, you can sleep and forget. Um, guys, when you sleep, you don't forget. And that's kind of the problem. So uh, that's a brief experience for me. I'm going to share a lot of stuff on stream. Uh, I plan to go into my addiction problem. I plan to go into everything. I'm not the kind of person that holds secrets, guys. I don't hold back anything. I'm an open book, and there's a reason why, because I truly do believe we can save a life. And if we do, uh, I don't want attention to the fact that we saved the life. I want attention on that life that we saved. Let's highlight that person who we saved because it's far more important than giving credit to anybody that's here because we're not out here looking for credit. We're not out here looking for hoorahs and, and yippies and all that. What we're here to do is we're here to save a life. And um, I know for a fact that we've already helped one. He's one of my closest friends. And he came and told me just the other day that he sought help. He saw a doctor already. And uh, I cried for like six hours afterwards. So um, it means a lot to me because I've been through it. And I'm speaking from firsthand experience. So uh, major kudos to Team Sirius, UV, Rage Zone, Club Kiwi, Galaxy Hand. Uh, you guys are inspirations for what we're doing. So uh, I'm going to stop and go cry, and I'm going to let Sage take over. So, of course, you know the story that Toom just told um, also portrays to me a little bit. But um, I will go more in depth with that during my stream. 
Um, mine is going to be a little bit more touching on again my son with our our son with autism, not just mine. Um, <laughs> um, so a brief story is um, back in the the day. Yes, I'm old. Um, when um, our son Jason, he um, we were still f figuring things out with him and his autism. We were told because he was so young, we were not allowed to diagnose him. Um, I knew something was up. I kept talking to my husband about it, um, but we were trying to go the routes about it. Um, people don't understand that because you can't physically see something, which again is a mental health stigma, that there is nothing wrong with them. Um, I was waiting to pick up our oldest son from school. Um, I had my youngest daughter on my hip. She was about nine months old. Um, I have a set of twins at this point in a school building in a lunch cafeteria. Um, Jason is yanking on me. He doesn't have patience. He doesn't at this point like to be touched, doesn't like to be held, but he wants to run around. Um, he's throwing a tantrum and in public it is discriminated against to punish your child physically. Um, and with a child with autism, you cannot talk to them. He does not understand verbal communication at this point. Um, so I decided to, instead of talking to him or punishing him in that light in public, I decided to take him outside. Mind you, when you, of course, any child who knows he's about to be punished, what do they do? They drop to the ground and you have to drag them, correct? Um, this woman decided to watch me. And because I couldn't stand him up, I'm holding a nine month old. I also have a second child who is his twin sister. Um, thought I was abusing my child. Instead of approaching me, she approached me after the fact of this, told me that I had abused my child, beat my child, was going to call the cops on me. And mind you, she is doing this in front of me, in front of the entire cafeteria full of other parents and teachers. Um, I was mortified, I was terrified. Um, at that point in time, mind you, she has no clue what's going on at home. I'm dealing with this at home with a child alone because my spouse is military. He's gone at night. He's asleep during the day. I have three children on my own. I am a full-time student online. Um, I'm, we're trying to figure out what is wrong with our child, what the right course of action is. I am drained. Um, and she's like, I'm like, you have no clue. You have not walked in my shoes. She goes, I'm a mother of five. I said, then you should understand what it's like. You should have helped minus degrading me. Um, so at that point in time, I went home and I told my husband and I said, I'm never leaving this house again. I'm never going to take our children anywhere. I'm never going to be like this. So at that point in time, I never thought I was going to leave my house with my children. When you're degraded by people, it's hard to be a parent. It's still hard to leave a house with a child who has a disability and you don't know how to handle it. From each day, it's hard. We love him to death, but to treat him any different is hard. And to be told differently or to be degraded or told you're going to have the cops called on you is hard. So we'll touch more on it when I stream. But being a caregiver of someone who is thought doesn't look any different. He doesn't look any different at all. But autism is not thought to be a mental illness. It's not. It's still new to us. But um, you can catch me in my stream. We'll talk about it more in depth. I'll talk about more of my caregiving of my child and of my spouse and of all my children and myself. But um, please have more of an open mind about it. Please always ask before you just judge of anyone who doesn't look any different, whether it's an adult, a child, a family member. Please just have a heart. That's it. Sage, all I can say is I love you, lady. Um, I, I feel you. Um, both my kids have ADHD. And that's just been diagnosed two years ago for my daughter and just now at kindergarten for my son. So I totally feel on stigmas and uh, people not accepting mental health uh, struggles. 
uh, with children with disabilities and uh, the trying to keep a sense of normal around. So my heart is with you. I, I understand. I feel you. And uh, when I go into mental health, as, yeah, I mentioned a little bit of my, my military time, but this year my breaking point was losing my dad. So grief is the big one. Grief is the one that smacked me in the face. I've lost people. I've seen people die. I've held people as they've died. And I've been able to work my way through that and deal with it. But to get a phone call half a world away from my family one morning, straight after Christmas, and be told my dad had gone, brought me to my knees. And... I went through a sense of loss and I couldn't function for months this year. I escaped into my gaming world, my gaming community. Um, I was literally on autopilot through life. And I can honestly say by about July, August, I could finally just start breaking through the light. Something I honestly never shared openly with everyone online, uh, you know, with the gaming, with everything like that, because I'm the one that has to be strong. I have to be strong for my kids because I'm a single parent. Uh, but I chose that life. And so I have to be strong because I chose it. And this is all inside my head. No one else's but inside my own head. So I battle myself on a, a daily basis is showing strength because I have to. I run a company, I've got workers, I've got responsibilities, I can't break down. I can't not do a business meeting with somebody because it's my livelihood, it's it's how I function, it's how I survive for my family. Uh, with my friends, it's my escape and I don't want to burden them with what I have going on in my world. And so every day was just one foot in front of the other i had to be and i wasn't being me and of course COVID didn't help that situation so i am owning it i can look back on how i was barely functional I, you know my business is still running my kids are still alive and healthy and uh you know i know i haven't given as much for myself to them as i was working through that but I know that I will come out okay on the other side. But amongst all that, it brought a lot of my past out too from my time in the military emergency services because I didn't just serve in the military when I got out. I still wanted to give to my communities. So I was a volunteer paramedic for a period of time in New Zealand before I moved to Canada. Here in Canada, I was fire rescue and search and rescue because that's who I am. I give and that's where I feel like I am whole because I give, which is why I do my streaming in my community thing now, is I still want to find a way to give. And it's good because, hey, I can bury my head in the sand, ignore what's going on in my real world. But sometimes it's not good because I'm not facing and dealing with what I have to. And, uh, you know, this month is a hard one because this month is the 12 month anniversary i last saw my dad and it's hard it was a beautiful time we had a great family uh, get together but i didn't know it'd be the last time i'd see him and you always have that that guilt of wishing you had that one minute more to say something else the one hour the one day you know, that phone call you did connect that you wish you'd spoken to them um, and working through all those elements to be okay with how that loss was and what you're feeling is okay. And those days where those memories just wash over you of whatever it is that it's okay to feel the way you feel and to be vulnerable and open, which I've hidden for so long. So that that strength mommy, i always feel mommy, i have to portray yeah okay darling i love I you okay uh that that strength of of every day of having to be there and being that person um i don't have to and i feel by showing that vulnerability somebody else is gonna go 
I can feel that. I relate to that. And I can actually realize it's okay to feel the way I feel and not take the path down into the darkness, into the depths as far as they might have gone. So if we can bring light and everyone to realize that mental health is health. It's not mental health, it's health. It, it's not just physical health we, we strive for, it's mental health. And that uh, everyone needs to find those moments and go, I'm okay because there's somebody there for me, because they relate to a story. And that's what I hope we can achieve uh, through this initiative is that, yeah, that one person can be helped to the point of not going down that rabbit hole. And it's okay to not be okay. It's it's pretty phenomenal listening to the stories that Tombstone and Sage and uh, Kiwi have just shared. And um, I'm going to share with you guys something that I haven't told anybody really outside of my my personal family and obviously my my wife Sasha. And um, I think it's something that's important to bring to a forefront because people might deal with these things in different ways. My, my dad is a professional tennis player, and um, at the age of two years old, I had a racket in my hand, and I was destined to be the next Andre Agassi. Um, as you can tell by sitting in this chair, that didn't happen. Um, throughout my younger years, I used to play competitive tournaments. Um, I used to travel all across Northern California, Southern California, playing in tournaments, and um if I didn't perform well, it did not go well with my dad. Um, it got to the point that he started physically abusing me for things that I was doing incorrectly on the tennis court. Um, he used to throw locks at me from the basket that he had his balls. He used to hit tennis balls at me. And when I tell you that having a professional tennis player hit 60 70 mile an hour tennis balls at you believe me it can it can hurt and um being an only child in my family i uh had very high expectations as far as what i was supposed to do i was also the first born of my family who's from colombia i was the first born american here in the united states and uh all eyes were on me and the expectations of what i was supposed to fulfill who i was supposed to be in their eyes and it got to the point that my parents ended up divorcing. And when I was eight years old, I was dragged into a mediator's office and I was asked by some stranger in a suit if I wanted to go live with my mom or if I wanted to go live with my dad. And for the longest time when I was a kid, I blamed myself for them separating. And for the longest time, all I could think to myself was that I wasn't good enough because I wasn't meeting the expectations of my father. And that's something that I've carried with me most of my life. It's something that has defined me for who I am. It's something that I do in my real life. It's something that I do in my streaming life. It's something that I do with absolutely everything. If I'm not somehow the best at it, I feel like I'm a failure. And that's something that I live with every single day because that's all I've known and that's all I've been taught is how to be nothing but the best and how to not fail. And um, being the black sheep of the family and not living up to your family's expectations of you is not something that's really easy to deal with. I'm 30 years old now. Things, things have changed for me. But believe me, when I tell you that I ran away from California, I ran away from California. When I was 18 years old, I saved up enough money and I bought a car and I packed up my stuff. And my dad yelled at me and said, where the hell are you going? And I said, I'm getting as far away from the fuck from you as I can. And I left. I didn't talk to my dad for a little while. And... um he uh he's come around right i guess as things grow older you 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 accept the things that you're supposed to accept and he remarried and 
he has uh, another son, my my half brother, and he's doing the same shit to him. Not not to the extreme that he did it to me. He's not physically abusing my stepbrother, but I love my stepbrother to pieces. But in a way, it almost feels like this is his second chance to kind of redo me. And um, I kind of get put on the back burner a little bit. Actually, I get put on the back burner a lot with my family. And seven years ago, I met Sasha, and I'm really glad that I met Sasha because I was in a really horrible place in my life. I, uh, I was drinking a lot, and I was going to the darkest shadows in my mind because I just couldn't live with the fact that I just wasn't good enough. And I didn't fulfill my family's expectations of being the best and who I was supposed to be. Mental health is really something that um, that is something that's funny because even from the day that you're born all the way to however old you are now, it's something that it can carry with you and the impacts that you have on somebody's life can last them for a lifetime. And uh, breaking the stigma and saying that it's okay to not be okay i live with it every single day that i'm a product of an environment of who i am because how i was brought up i've taken some of the good i've taken some of the bad but i think that actually having somebody that you can talk to and somebody that you can openly discuss whatever your struggle is it helps because if i'd never met sasha seven years ago i don't i don't really know where i would be right now I was in that bad of a spot. And um, Sasha was my break the stigma. You know, Sasha knew that it was okay not to be okay. And together, you know, we've made each other into better people. And I hope that with this, somebody could see this and just know that it's okay. These people here talking today um, have amazing stories that, you know, like we all said from the beginning, break the stigma. Um, we saw how everybody here got vulnerable and told their story from Tomb's addiction to Sage being judged by the public with her son and with Kiwi with her trauma and what happened with her father and with Rage Quit with uh, all the things that went on with his childhood and how it shaped his life. Um, you know, I'm going to say kind of like what happened to me, but it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's definitely doesn't stem anything as serious, but it, it, it started as just me trying to find who I was when I was in my early twenties. Um, for me, it took much of a different turn. I wasn't, I, I, I grew up fine. I wasn't, you know, I don't, I don't have any kids. I don't have any of that kind of stuff that these wonderful people have talked about. For me, it was just more of getting into the right and look to the wrong places and doing things that I shouldn't have been doing growing up. Um, for me, it started off more as a um, rebel kind of thing where I just wanted to uh, get out and enjoy life, but I didn't want anybody to slow me down. So whatever anybody did, whatever anybody told me, I would look the other way and do the complete opposite. Uh, and I started drinking a lot and I started heavily drinking almost every day. Um, it got to the point where um, I just abused it a little bit more than I should have. Uh, and then it started to affect me almost as if uh, I started getting some symptoms of withdrawal and it caused a lot of um, physical damage to me. Uh, I started getting a lot of migraines. I started getting, getting a lot of anxiety, uh, a lot of uh, panic attacks and all that rolled into one uh, ended me in the hospital a few times because my body just didn't know how to handle it. And all that emotion, all that, everything that I have inside me was just uh, too much for me to handle. So uh, I probably ended up in the hospital about three or four times. And throughout this time, I had just, um, I didn't know what to do with my life. I felt stuck. I felt like I had, 
had a bigger purpose, but I didn't know what it was. And I just, you know, just tried looking the other way and, and felt stuck. So the only thing I could do was, you know, just start drinking some more to see if, if the, you know, the pain would go away and, and see if there's something else I could do with my life. And it, it ended up being pretty bad. So, um, after I ended up in the hospital, the, the third or fourth time, the final time that I was there, um, I, I needed a change in my life. And um, I sought different avenues. And, and I'm, a, I'm a big believer in the ki kind of environment that you're in will kind of reflect the, the you know, the uh, person or the type of emotions that you'll feel. So I completely eliminated the environment that I was in and rebuilt everything. So I had an amazing support system behind me. My family was there throughout the whole time. And my number one uh, person, my girlfriend, Faye, who helped me out through the entire time. And it helped that she was a nurse. So she knew what I was going through uh, during that time. And she went ahead and told me I can quit my job because my job was also uh, part of the reason. And I was being hindered because of the anxiety that I had. I, I wasn't showing up to work anymore because I would be at home dealing with anxiety attacks and panic attacks and all this other stuff. Uh, so then she told me, gave me her blessing, said, you can quit while you recover. Um, and I quit my job thanks to her. And we were able to still, you know, do what we needed to do to get by why I went ahead and recovered and essentially redid my entire life. I stopped hanging around the people that were bad influence with me. I stopped hanging around those crowds, the, uh, the everything that you can think of i just reverted to just being by myself and rebuilding my life um, and that's where most of the stuff started where i went ahead and pretty much purged everything and rebuilt from scratch so i had no job i had no money all my bills are piling up and i was starting to see okay what can i do now to restart my life um, and that's when i went into into just building something different that'll mean something to people around me, being an inspiration and and trying to take something new. So instead of just asking what the world can give me, I started asking, what can I give the world back? And looking at it from a different perspective, it helped me give me a little bit more purpose in life and where I wanted to go, who I wanted to help. And I knew that I needed to serve people. So that's exactly what I did. I started it on a mission where I wanted to build something for everybody to be involved. Hence why Team Serious came, came about because we brought people together. And this is why we're doing this today. This is a great example of us coming together, talking about mental health. Uh, it's part of the reason why it, 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 we started collaborating with other people and getting things involved because we needed to bring, let the word out, tell our stories. And, you know, hopefully this will help somebody, you know, in, in the, in the position that maybe rage was rage quit was in or something that Kiwi, you know, might've said that it resonates with somebody else or what tomb with addiction or sage, you know, the feeling with the, the, the you know, the, with the kids and everything like that, you know, those are stories that are powerful and going to impact people. And those are the ones that are going to get people to go out and reach out to others and ask for help, uh, breaking that stigma where, okay, well, it seems like a weakness just because you guys have anxiety, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it's real. It happens. It affects people and people take their lives because they don't know how to handle it. And people do things that they don't, they wish that they don't have to do that. They can just find something anything that can help them out, even if it's just talking to someone, whether it's text message or on the phone call or in person or anything like that. So for me, it helped me shape a lot of things that went through my life right now. And I'm a strong believer now that whatever the everything that I did to rebuild my life helped me get out of the situation that I was in. And now I'm surrounded with people like you guys here today that are helping not just us here, but are helping everybody. And this is what is ex exactly what we're, what, what should be happening is we should come together and, and help out others. Um, that's me. That's my story. Uh, I know you guys, uh, had better stories than me, <laughs> but you know, it was, uh, it was definitely a pleasure for me to speak here, uh, and hopefully make a difference in people's lives. Oh, I guess that means it's my turn, huh? So, um, 
I wouldn't even know where to begin, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I wouldn't say that I had a bad or a good life. I will say that I have had the life I think I was meant to have. And I can honestly say, one, I'm extremely honored to hear everybody's story here today. There's a, a little bit in everybody's story that I was able to identify with. And that was actually surprising for me because I've been in therapy for 10 years and I thought, oh, I got this. Nope, full tears today. <laughs> Um, I can understand. Um, every moment that I've had that led me to the moments I have now, I feel have made me the person that I am. So I wouldn't take back any of the bad or the good that I have. I would say that it strengthened me. I had some bad times as a kid. Um, which led me to the military and hasn't always been easy. When I did my first deployment back in 2007, I had just had my daughter. I deployed the day that she was four months old to the day. I was on a plane. My husband, not so, was on his way to Korea. So our three children were stuck with our parents back and forth, which I don't have the greatest relationship with my family. So that was terrifying all on its own for him to be gone, for me to be gone. It was hard and it was lonely and it wasn't easy. I'm a truck driver and I saw some interesting things. When I got home, I was always told, you know, just be tough. Everybody goes through it. It is what it is. You got to deal with it. If you say the wrong things, they'll put you out. And the army is the only thing I've ever done that I felt worthy about anything other than being a mom. So when I came home, I didn't know. I didn't have the tools, the building blocks that they're supposed to teach you as you grow in a healthy, happy family, I guess. I didn't know how to deal with the pain and the anger the waking up in the middle of the night, the nightmares. I didn't know how to deal with losing people that I, I saw every single day. And then the next day they just weren't there anymore. And it affected my marriage, my children, my family. I shut myself away in my room for three years before I sought help. And the only reason why I sought help was because my husband said, you're scaring me. And if you don't get help, I'm taking the kids and I'm leaving. I was so busy trying to be the shoulder that everybody had to lean on that I forgot that I needed to also be able to lean on someone else. And it wasn't until I almost lost my husband and my children that I realized that there was something really wrong. But I was scared to seek mental health because I was afraid that if I did, the army would say that I'm not fit for duty, that I am no longer serviceable as a person. But it took fear for me to realize I needed help. Fear of losing everything that mattered to me. So I started seeing a therapist. And I have been for over a decade now. And it is not always easy. 
There are days that are much harder than others. Some days I don't even want to get out of bed. Some days I drink too much, like last night. Had way too much vino. It happened. <laughs> I was sprawled out on the bed and I was crying because I wanted a Snickers bar because I have no idea. I mean, I also have ovaries, so that's the thing. And my husband looked at me and laughed, threw me in the, in the shower, said, sober up, crazy lady, because I love you and I want to watch a movie. And he's definitely my rock. And he's definitely my reason for everything. And he made me realize breaking the stigma doesn't mean that we're okay. Breaking the stigma means living it every single day because it is health every day. I want to learn how to not react to my children the way that my mother reacted to me. Sometimes it's hard to have a crazy five-year-old who wants you all day long. And when I get really mad, I look at her and I stop and I breathe and I remind myself that these are the moments that'll get me through my next deployment. These are the moments that when I'm all alone and I'm scared will help me stay brave. And if I spend too much time upset and not breathing and remembering, then I'm gonna miss it. So that's why for me, it's important to share the stories to talk about it because we're all screwed up, but we're screwed up together and it's okay. That's all I really got. Oh, my favorite is NAMI, by the way, for organizations. Um, like I said before, mental health for veterans is really near and dear to my heart. I think mental health for everyone is important but I've watched too many of my friends pass away because they don't know how to express how they feel. And so for me, that's really, really close, close to my heart. All right, for real this time, I'm done. <clears throat> I don't know how uh, I'm supposed to close this thing. Um, Watching my wife go through that and having been there and seeing it, or at least getting the firsthand knowledge of it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a, I'm an emotional crybaby. I love to uh, feel empathy for everyone, so uh, I'm going to cry a lot. Um, seeing what she went through, um, getting a chance to speak with Kiwi over the last few weeks, uh, I am constantly throwing praise her way uh, because I, I don't think you can ever stop. What an absolutely phenomenal lady uh, who... When I see mental health, I run from it. I'm terrified of it. I'm scared to death to go to sleep. I'm scared to death to deal with it. Those of you that know me, I get three hours of sleep a night, maybe. Um, I, I run terrified. Um, Kiwi doesn't. She puts her damn head down and she runs full blast into it. And it's, uh, she does cry. I've seen it. She's phenomenal, but uh, she's an inspiration to me that I don't have to fight. Um, Rage, I watched your stream the other night where you took on people who were cyberbullying you and to watch the strength that you showed, um, not even backing down even a fucking step. You didn't back down. You never once bat an eye. I would have been in a heap of trouble. I'd have been in a corner crying somewhere. Um, to stand up for your wife the way you did, is uh, it's commendable. To know that you went through what you did uh, and stood up for it and you didn't run away from your past. You didn't, you didn't bash, you didn't mince words. You didn't make excuses for, for what you did or you didn't do. Uh, you stood there right in the line of fire and you took it. And uh, I, I, unbelievable, man. Shook, I've known you for a long time. Uh, and, it, you know, we're coming up on two, two and a half years for you and I, and I've never heard your story. And uh, I see your strength every time we get together. Uh, I see you as rock solid as, as any man I've known. Um, but I never knew. I never knew what the demons were. Um, I've seen in your face that you fought it and that you've gone through it and that you battled it. And uh, now I know, and I'm grateful. And I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to share this little bit of a stage with you. 
uh, to share our, our time with Team Sirius UV. Um, our meetings late at night at two and three in the morning because you can't sleep either. Um, it's a pleasure. And I'm, I'm glad to serve this uh, this time with you. And I, I hope we do make a difference. Jimmy, you're one of my favorites. You know what? Um, I too have gone through the same mental anguish you have for the military, uh, but your your commitment to it is so much different than mine. Uh, again, I, I see military mental health. I hear the, the 22 days or 22 lives a day. I, I hear the stories. I've seen my friends take their own lives. I've seen it all. And instead, um, I focus on my friends and I focus on my people. And yet you commit every day to making the world for veterans a, a better place and a safer place. And it's, uh, you and I have talked about it a million times over drinks. Uh, it's something that I wish I could be better at. I wish I had the same commitment to excellence that you do, that you bring with you every day. And I know uh, Sage feels the same way because we, we love you and we're here for you. And so uh, when we're when we're carrying you to the shower and we're making sure that you're sobering up, uh, just remember you're not you're not alone. And even when you do go over there, uh, you're not alone. We're, we're one call away um, or one Skype away. Uh, I don't know if I can do the rest of this. Um, once again, December 10th through the 13th, uh, four or five amazing communities, Team Sirius, United Vindication, Rage Quit, uh, Club Kiwi, and Galaxy Hound. We're partnering to bring these stories and many, many more like them to your front doorstep. Um, please come by, support us. Uh, some of you out there that are listening might be into trolling streams. Please keep that stuff at home this weekend. Um, leave that stuff at home. These people are, are coming forward. They're vulnerable. They're hurting. Um, and this is a chance for us to uh, to be there for one another. And I can't read that because if I do, I'm in a ball. Um, the streaming lineup, like I said, Thursday, we're going to kick off with uh, the Team Serious Ladies. Then we're going to go into Galaxy on Friday will be another podcast followed by streams. Saturday and Sunday will be the exact same thing. Excuse me. Thursday's pre-records. Friday is Galaxy Hound. Saturday, Sunday will be the other four communities. Uh, wanted to give a major shout out to all of these communities. Um, United Vindication, you give me strength every single day. Um, every day that I come out here, every day that I do a podcast or I, I talk about something, uh, it's my family behind me that gives me that strength. Uh, Team Sirius, I've worked with you guys for several several years now, and I, I love you guys as much as anybody. Um, we do things a little bit differently. We, we like to, to be a little looser and not, not be the business side, but uh, I, I see an example in you guys, and I try to follow it every way that I can. Rage, I, I told you, man, I'm, I'm super ecstatic to be working with you. Nobody does it better than you do. Nobody shows the strength and the, the motivation that you do. It all makes a little more sense now. Um, but uh, you're right there with me. I had the same expectations when I was growing up, so we're there. Um, but I appreciate you and everything you've done for us and in the short time that we've been working together. Kiwi, I love you. I'm not reading that. I refuse. I'm going to cross it out. I'm not even going to read it. Um, but she sent us a message in our little chat here, and I'm not going to read it because I'll cry a lot. But uh, thank you so much for taking part in this. Thanks for being such an amazing human being so quickly. Uh, you embrace Sage within the first day that she reached out to you. And immediately I knew that we had someone special that we had found. And so uh, I remember reaching out telling you how grateful I was for you to have accepted her into your arms and your family that way. And from there, it's been a rocket ship straight out of the solar system. It's been such a great thing. This is not Sage right now. This is Galaxy Hound. Galaxy Hound, thank you for what you've done. Thanks for giving away all the all the, the stuff that you have and investing your time and effort into this project because uh, you didn't have to. You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to give what you did, and you did. You stood up when a lot of other organizations are cowering in the corner doing what uh, they shouldn't be and running away from the stigma, and you stood up as a, as a leader in the industry to make a change. Thank you to Sage. Now she's Sage. I don't know if y'all saw the picture change, but uh, she really is my caregiver. And whenever I need help, I say, I'm going to go lay down and tell me if you need me. She never does. She takes on the, the entire brunt of it herself, and she does everything. She runs our family, and she never asks questions. She never dives into it. She doesn't need to know the details. She just she pushes forward, and she handles the family like, uh, like only she can when I can't. So... Um, Big shout out to all the sponsors, all the clubs, all the groups, all the communities, all of the teams that are here that are taking part. Those of you that are going to support as well, we're, we're thankful. We're grateful for you listening to our stories and, and working with us to break that stigma. There is going to be a merch store. We have not got the link. We'll make sure to post that on all social media leading up to this. Uh, so our advertising channels will have that as soon as it's complete. It should be complete within the next week. If not, we'll make uh, we'll make amends and we'll... Uh, We'll update you as soon as possible. Uh, with that being said, that's everything that I've got. These five people, thank you so much. 
for sharing just a bit of your stories. I cannot wait. I can't wait because I'm going to cry a lot, but I cannot wait to hear the full stories. Um, Closing thoughts. Huh? Closing thoughts. I will. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm looking forward to hearing the full stories. Uh, really quick, I, I want to go around the, the room one more time, get some closing thoughts, uh, let everybody speak one more time about uh, the, the organization, the, the stream itself, and then I will hit the end button. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with Sage, and then we'll go around the room. Um, I wasn't supposed to be me first, but fine. Um, yeah, mental health is, um, I think he would put it best. Mental health is not just mental health. It's health in general. Um, I've had a little bit of mental health myself, but from a caregiver's point of view, you are not left in the dark. You need to take care of yourself before you can help others. So always remember that care for yourself first, or you cannot care for others. Um, always take a step back, take a day for yourself. Trust me, the world won't fall apart. Um, you are not alone. Reach out to others, reach out to just anyone in general. Venting is not, I hate to say it, bitching. You have to get it off your chest. You have to speak to someone. Um, even if it's just a friend, if it's a family member, if it's professional, um, you are not alone. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to cry. You can cry in the shower. You can let it all wash away. You can cry in your closet like someone does. Um, I've learned the new trick. Cry in your closet with your shoes. Use your clo clean clothes as snot rags and just wash it. It's it's fine. You get tips and tricks from everyone and you can mold them into your own. Um, gaming is actually a really good thing. You learn things from other people that can be helpful and you can actually find really good friends in new places who are going through similar things than you. They're never exactly the same but they are um, actually quite similar. First and foremost, I want to say I love you all even more so after today. <laughs> and uh, everyone's stories, yeah, uh, everyone, a, a snippet of everyone's story make, uh, brings reality to me uh, for what I've uh, experienced through life. And, you know, hearing that means you aren't alone in any situation with mental health. And that's the most important thing. No one's story is worse than anyone else's. So uh, I'm sorry, Shuk, but you're trying to downplay. Yours is just as important as everyone else's because your reality is somebody else's and that's got to make a difference uh, down the road because we don't get to walk in everyone else's shoes. We don't exactly for what they're going through, but having the love and understanding if one part of someone's story relates, we know it's going to make a difference. And uh, knowing you all has is, is already been making a difference in my life, and I'm so thankful for it. And uh, I appreciate each and every day uh, the blessings I have in my life. And when I know there's that down moment, I know without judgment, I can reach out to people and uh, get it all off my chest openly and honestly. And no one's going to sit there and talk behind my back or slam me because I've been honest. I can't lie for shit. So that's why playing Among Us doesn't work for me because I get booted even when I'm not lying. Um, and I can get caught out because I can't lie. So I am too an open book, which is, I think, where uh, Tum and I are, are so alike and, and we get along, you know. Uh, for my my uh, veteran uh, brothers and sisters, anyone that serves, it doesn't matter what country of the world, that is that family unity. And uh, so here at Club Kiwi, uh, when we do the event, I, I will be supporting uh, two veteran trusts. I live in Canada now, so Wounded Warriors Canada which is support for PTSD for all emergency services and the No Duff Charitable T Trust in New Zealand, which is once again a, a veteran service uh, uh, for everyone uh, in New Zealand. And that is where all donations will be going uh, for the event uh, through Club Kiwi um, because that is where it sits near and dear to my heart. Um, but thank you again for including me in this event. Like I say, I'm, I'm blessed to know you guys and to hopefully together as communities, we can make a big difference. Well, you've seen it here today, right? You know, six people, six different walks of life, six different stories to tell. And, um, 
it, it doesn't really matter in what shape or form mental health and mental struggles can show itself. It's there. And um, I think you've heard from six incredible people today how being able to share your story and being able to know that you're not alone. You look at United Vindication behind Tombstone. You look at Sage and the incredible posture and poise that she has. And you look at Kiwi and her strength. And you look at Shook, who is literally unshooken. And you look at Jimmy and you see the real raw emotion you you can you could just see that if none of us ever shared our stories today you would never think that any of us on this channel would struggle in the ways that we do and to know that everybody in some form shape or another at some point in their life has had to deal with something that has happened to them or is happening to them and to know that on the surface, things might look great, things might look incredible, things might look awesome and turn on the stream and fire it up and it's just another day and it's all good, right? Biddies, subs, hype trains and followers, it's all good. And a lot of the time it's not. And if this gives strength just for one person to come forward and be able to talk and be able to help and be able to know that somebody is there for them, this will have been a success. And that's why Rage Zone is participating in this. And I'm so proud to be here with these teams and with these incredible people. I just want to go ahead and say thank you, everyone, for everything that you've said. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Uh, those of you who, who will be listening to this, uh, just like all of us have mentioned, there's six of us, six different stories. Um, and I'm sure that at least one of our stories will hit somebody and they will be like, that's me right now. And that's what I'm going through. And so if you're that one person who let's say Jimmy's story was that, that that's your position right now, or it's Kiwi story. I'm there at the moment, or it's tomb or rage or sage, whoever it may be, you know, even if it's my story that hit you, you will feel free to reach out to me because if I can make a difference and help you how I got through it and help you get through it, then I'm there and I will be every step of the way there to help you. I'm sure everybody else here will do the same just to make sure that you guys are okay because that's how much it meant to us. The learning lessons that we got helped us to be the person that we are today. It's kind of like what Jimmy said earlier. She, uh, she mentioned, you know, she has lived the life that she's meant to live. And that's kind of us. We're living the life that we lived in order to make a difference in people's lives. We all have a purpose in this world. We, have all lived through the worst times, if not living through them now. Uh, and we've already get, got past it, which is why we're telling a story today is because we can help those who are going through similar situations, at least try to help or point you to the right direction where you want to go. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask anyone, whether it be here or any of the hotlines that we may have via text message or on Discord or whatever it may be that you guys may have, whatever platform we will be there for you guys. We'll help you out. Uh, again, I want to say thank you for everybody. Thank you for their time. Um, and I'll let Jimmy go ahead and talk next for the serious ladies and everything else. Uh, final thoughts. I always have so many thoughts and never know which ones to go with. <laughs> let me just uh, say, clear it. The closet is the best place to cry. All my shoes are there. All my favorite friends. Uh, <laughs> and there may or may not be a seat there that's very comfy. Just say. Um, <laughs> I think, um, like I said before, it's an, it's an honor to be with you guys here today to hear your stories, um, because I know they're hard. It's hard. And, and it doesn't matter how little you think your story is or how every day it's hard to wake up. They're all important and they all matter. And it's an honor to hear them. Um, there are lots of organizations out there that are, are, their whole thing is serving us and helping us to get better too. Um, some of the few that I like are uh, Military One Source. I like NAMI. Um, there's the, the National Crisis um, Suicide Hotline. There's, there's so many great organizations filled with so many people that want to help people get better. And it's important to remember that no matter how bad you might feel today, bottom of the barrel, 
if you wake up tomorrow morning, that's a better day because you're in it. You're in the world and the world is better when you're in it. And sometimes it's hard to hear that message, I know. But I, I hear it now through your voices, through your stories. I'm here for anybody who wants to just let it out because even just hearing your guys' stories has helped me feel not alone. Just a little bit, a lot of bit. I mean, I'm, I'm red right now. I may drink later. Who knows? <laughs> Jump in some of your guys' streams, see what happens. <laughs> but I, I'm glad that we're doing this. I think it's important that we do this. And I'm so glad to, to be blessed to be with you guys today and the rest of the weekend of tears, apparently. And uh, as long as we help just one person, I'm happy. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you.